Join me and my dad while we explore everything. Remember to hit, like, subscribe, and ring the notification bell. Ding! Thank you for watching. Well, thank you for that amazing introduction, Miraculous Girl, and thank you everyone for joining us again here on Exploring It All. Uh, as you can see, I have a little mixed bag of tricks right here, so to speak. <laughs> uh, this is from my good friend, Doc P. Uh, we've become pretty good friends over the last few years, and um, I really appreciate him sending it. I sent him some stuff, and then he sent me all this stuff, and now i got to figure out something that's as awesome as this. This is a patch I'm going to just kind of briefly touch on it uh, because I'll butcher it. And he sent me a huge letter that I printed out with all of the information. Uh, it was a personal gift to me and, and I really appreciate it. This was a special patch from his uh, class from weapons training. I believe uh, with the Air Force and um, it's just really awesome and each one I guess they design their own patch and, and whatnot so I don't know that's that's it his class was 15A and uh, it was the 8th weapons squadron and then you have the different aircraft and of course the don't tread on me snake and stuff and then I like the way they incorporated the 8 into the body of the snake there in red that's really cool um and then you have the different silhouettes of the different aircraft the c-130 ec-130 see i'll start butchering stuff so i'm not going to go into that but i wanted to express in here um that i may not have got across the first time around here so i'm inserting this clip is this gift is one of those things that when you pass this on to somebody it is very very meaningful and it, I just you know this is an awesome awesome gift that he passed on to me and you know he talked about how there's no words of how he felt about going through this training and and getting this patch and and wearing this patch and and all the things he went through for that and they were each given so many extras, and for him to pass one on to me, brother, I just can't say thank you enough. And that's one of those things people always say, thank you for your service and things of that sort. And I've heard it myself, even as a first responder. And it, 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 you feel gratitude for that, but to pass something to, to me like this, that's, again, I just... Um, I can't say thank you enough times. I really appreciate it from the bottom of my heart. I, I, I thank, thank you, brother. Thank you for everything. I just, I appreciate it that he sent me this. And so big shout out. Thank you on all that. Actually, he sent me everything here. Um, most of it was the, you know, little goody extra things. We got to remove before flight tag from the Till Valhalla project. I... I get some of the Till Valhalla shirts. I got one coming actually coming up here soon and I'll unbox that. But um, I don't subscribe so they do have a monthly subscription as well and different levels and whatnot that are more exclusive shirts and they send you other things. And one of them is this remove before flight key tag. Of course, for accuracy purposes, it probably should be red. And of course, remove before flight tags are larger when they're on the aircraft. They use them uh, in... Uh, you know, the pitted tubes, and they use them on the bombs, they use them on brake lines, or uh, the brakes when they lock, brake locking pins, all, all kinds of different things on aircraft. They have the remove before flight tags that are bright red so that they stand out so everyone can see if they've been removed or not. And again, as I mentioned, I tend to butcher things. The remove before flight tags they put those pins in the landing gear uh, to lock them down so they won't accidentally collapse. Um, and that's what I meant when I, I for whatever reason, I said brake lines or, or whatever. Um, and again, they will put those on inlet covers on aircraft um, to keep dust and debris from, from getting inside when the aircraft are sitting. 
and not actively getting ready to take off and whatnot. Anyway, I just wanted to correct that. I didn't want everyone to think I was totally lame. So anyway, cool keychain, love it, that's awesome. And then uh, he sent me a, another from the Blue Creek Knives, Knife, Knife Nerds Unite sticker, so that's cool. Uh, Blue Creek Knives, unfortunately no longer in uh, business or they may be having some closing out sales, uh, but we had a lot of fun with him there for a little bit. All right, so what do we have here? We have some Swiss Army Knife fire starters, um, a couple different styles, to, and also a tinder that these can be utilized in on different pocket knives, Swiss Army Knives. And I'm going to pause for a second, and I have a set different Swiss Army Knives that we're going to take a look at. All right, so very quickly, I gathered up some of the Swiss Army knives here. Now, the first item is we have a couple different sizes here. This is the Fire Ant, and this is the Firefly, I think. And they're by Tortoise Gear. So we have two different small ferrule rods here. Actually, these are the larger ones, but we have two different sizes. And it appears, yes, the heads on those are angled like the toothpick. And then the same goes on these two shorter ones here. So you have the two larger ones and the two shorter ones. Maybe show them side by side here. The longer one is exactly two inches and the shorter one is about an inch and a half. And that's what they look like. Now one thing I noticed when he did it, we're kind of doing a joint review on this is, and I'm going to use my UV light, my arc light from uh, O light on these to give you just, that UV light will charge these things up really fast and you guys will see these glow in the dark quite a bit and I have the lights on and you can see that glow so I don't think I need to do a, a light trick. So what you're going to do, this is either, what, 111 millimeter. Uh, you find your toothpick and I don't know, sometimes the heads on these won't, it's, it fits in there perfect. So you, the longer one will fit in that 11 millimeter Swiss Army knife, uh, work champ I think this one is. So we'll set that one there. And this is a 130 millimeter Ranger grip. And I'm gonna see Okay, that one does not go in. The long one doesn't go in. You have to go with the shorter one on the Ranger grip. And then you, of course, have your regular 93 millimeters. I'll pull this one out. This is a camper. The camper has the saw blade, and there's a reason I picked that one. In the toothpick spot. And let's see which one fits in that one. If the long one fits. No, didn't go in. The shorter one seems to fit. The long one didn't fit on that. I'm kind of surprised. Now I'm having trouble getting that out. So this longer one did not. Oh yeah, it does. I wonder if it's a variation of the scales of the knife. Let's try over here. I got a, this is a compact that I put different color tools in and it fits in that one pretty good is this a compact? no this is a Spartan um, so it fits in that one so some of the scales depending on how old they are uh, it may take a difference and I'm sure the smaller one this is one of the 84 millimeter so is this, this is of the Delmont line with the contour grips, but let's go with this one. This one doesn't have any backspring tools. This is a, 
an 84 millimeter, I believe. And we'll try the smaller one in there. That seems light. Seems like that's going to have to be the long one also. So I'd like to see where they fit. Yeah, long one fits in that one as well. So, oh, you know what? I bet this small one will fit in the, um, in a classic. Stand by. So here we have the classic. I believe this one is a Rambler. And I'll take the toothpick out of that. And this shorter one fits right in that little classic. Ha, <laughs> so you can, you can use these in just about everything. All right, so that's about how that part fits. So let's um, look at the next step here. And that is we have the fire ants. These are awesome. These are little ferro rods. And again, these, I'm gonna charge these up real quick. And sunlight will do this. The UV light just does it faster. And these actually have the Victorinox logo on them. So I guess they're the ones making them. So again, you guys can see there, those are glowing. And these just go into, and a lot of times I just throw, I don't know that this one came with uh, one of the little micro screwdrivers, but you basically just replace that in there. So any Swiss Army knife that you have that has a corkscrew feature, you're gonna be able to use this one. Now, this is a, uh, what, the, the camper, and it has the Phillips screwdriver, so you would have to exclusively use the toothpick version, ferrule rod, you wouldn't be able to use the, the other one. And of course, you got no corkscrew here. Um, and again, this one has no back. This 84 millimeter walker has no back to it. Uh, so you're not gonna have a corkscrew on that one as well. Anyway, so we have that. And then final look, and I've practiced with these. When Doc P was doing it, he was outside and it was raining on him and stuff, and so he had some difficulty getting, I think it was the little mini ones to light up. But these twist right down into that corkscrew, and these are little cotton wax impregnated deals, and then you can put this, screws right in the middle of it. So now you have some fire tinder and your striker. All right. So let's get down to the meat and potatoes of this and try and set some stuff on fire. I've already fluffed up one here. One thing I failed to mention though is these little Helix fire tenders actually come in two different sizes. There's a short one that you can use in conjunction with your little ferrule rod striker. And then the other one is longer and more independent of just carrying that and then maybe your your longer ferrule rod with it. So I fluff some up. I'm going to fluff up a little bit more here. Move that one out of the way. Now one thing I tend to do when I'm fluffing up these types of fire starters is I get them really fibrous so that they can catch any itsy bitsy type of spark and I find that it'll catch better when you do that so I'm going to use this one first here just to show how I fluff that up and I'm going to start with the hard one which is the small one. I'm going to use this one because I already kind of tested on it. Now, there's a couple different tools you can use when you're striking these. Um, although you got to be careful when using this. The back of the saw blade will throw a spark. 
Now, usually I use a bigger one, but we're using the micros. Whoa. All right, so that was with the back of the saw using the fire ant. And then there's one other way to do that. And as you guys can see, that caught really quick because it was so fluffed. The only way I could simulate rain is if I went outside and turned on the sprinklers. And I know I couldn't do it. <laughs> I'm just going to say that. I know if I turned on the sprinklers, uh, I wouldn't be able to do it. So that gives you a, it, I mean, it doesn't have a hugely long burn time, but it does give you a little bit of time in order to uh, get a fire started. Now that was using the back of the saw. And then the other way that's commonly used with Swiss Army knives, and I know a lot of Swiss Army knife hacks, so I have a little bit of an unfair advantage there, um, is using the awl. And I think that's what uh, Doc was using. And so I'm going to try this. Again, I'm using a lot less this time. I'm not using the whole dilly bopper. And we'll give this a shot. It's really hard to get a grip on this. I will tell you that right now. All right. You know what? You're going to get a fair amount of little strikes off of this. I mean, you would not want to take this out and have this be your primary fire starter by any means. Um, <laughs> carry a lighter, whatnot. But, uh, you know carry a ferro rod that <laughs> but this is your last ditch effort backup kind of situation that's that's kind of how I'm seeing it so they're saying that these are waterproof now I don't I, they don't go into detail as to what their definition of being waterproof is but I'm thinking what they intend by that, and that is true of most of these waxed things, is if you get them wet. So this is just water. Put it in there. I'm going to take it out. I'm going to shake the excess water off of it, but I'm not going to try and dry it. This could be a big fail. So we'll see what happens. I have not attempted this test. at all. I gotta fluff this up. Alright, so I'm gonna give it a shot here. This one's I'm going to use one of the uh, longer ones since I haven't done that yet. I'm going to go back to using the saw blade. I'm getting a good spark. There we go. Simulate wind. I don't want to blow it across the across the room. Took me a few. Well, everyone, that's a look at the Firefly ferro rod, toothpick ferro rods, the Fire Ant uh, micro screwdriver ferro rods, and the Helix fire starters. Uh, and a few other items that I did get also. Uh, again, thank you very much to my good friend, Doc P. Uh, really appreciate you. And appreciate everyone out there who's taken the time to watch my videos. Remember, hit like, subscribe, and be nice to each other.